Ah, greetings YouTube. Uh, this will be a short tutorial, hopefully short, uh, showing you, good folks at home there, how you might go from having a plan view, a bit like this, like a 2D drawing, uh, and then take that into sketch up, good old sketch up, and uh, draw straight over the top of it basically to create something like that. And uh, there, for example, is the plan. Okay, uh, so no, I'm not gonna go into all the detail of all those bits and pieces there, but I will show you the basic process of bringing the drawing in, uh, how to convert it to the right scale so that you are working at the scale that the drawing indicates, and maybe a couple of quick ways to create the external walls. Wonderful, all right, so let's get started. Uh, I'm just gonna be using a standard template in SketchUp. Uh, this is the 2016 version, and there's the little person uh, that they put there. Uh, so we're going to, of course, delete her. She's gone, and okay, how to bring in the template image. Uh, basically, in SketchUp, if you go into the File menu and you go down to Import, uh, it will give you choices there of uh, bringing in uh, quite a number of things really. One of which though of course is different images you can bring in. And the only thing that's important here is to understand what the different options are for how you can bring an image in. Uh, you can bring an image in in several different ways into SketchUp. Uh, one way as the default interface there has shown is to use it as an image. It also gives you the option of using it as a texture and you can also use it as a matched photo if you were trying to get uh, an image of a site or something and match your model to a photo you've taken. We don't want to do that, we just want to bring this in as an image because uh, we're not using it as a texture. Okay, so leave it on user's image. Uh, you can bring in different file types. I find that JPEGs are usually pretty straightforward. They very rarely cause too many problems. So the file I'm bringing in is just a JPEG and it's just here sitting in a folder I'm working with and it brings it straight in and then slightly mysteriously what this program seems to like to do is it requires you to um, it basically puts the image immediately on your um, mouse okay where wherever you have your mouse uh, located and then it requires you to click once and then you sort of click a second time it's very strange this and I think at this point a lot of people get concerned about oh they need to be mindful of the scale that it's creating. You don't really. You can actually click it to be anywhere. So you click once to start, click a second time to place it, and it will place it at whatever arbitrary size that happens to be. But then, this is the magic bit, how you then turn that into the actual correct scale that you need is, all you've got to do, I'm just using the orbit tool here to rotate my view around, and just zooming up there a bit with the middle mouse button. So long as your plan has got something on there that's indicating a measurement that you want to uh, work with. Okay, so this particular one is a fairly simplified plan view of a uh, structure. Uh, it's got some internal measurements on the rooms there. I could use those. Or, conveniently, it's actually got a scale measure. Okay, just down the bottom here. So all I really need to do is I can use a tool in SketchUp that allows me to effectively tell the program what scale that is. And it works like this. Uh, it's helpful if your view is reasonably flat, so I'm just going to move that. Of course, I could go up to the camera view here and choose standard view top, and that's giving me a look straight over the top of that. And then what I want to do is I want to swap to the, uh, what do we call this, the measuring tape, um, whatever they call it in SketchUp, I call it the measuring tape because it looks like one. And what you do is if you come down to drawing, you might find you've got to zoom up a little bit to that, and you simply just indicate uh, by clicking once at the start of the scale point and then click a second time at the end of the scale point. Okay, it's basically as close as you can get it to what the drawing looks like there. And uh, then down in the little bottom indicator there where you're normally putting in your dimensions for things, um, if you just simply type in the scale that you need that to be, so we just measured three meters, so you simply type in 3M hit enter or return and the program will say do you want to resize the model and you say yes and then what that will have done it's modified that now so that 
that measurement on the drawing is actually three meters in the program. And you can assess that by just drawing anything. So if I draw a box, that's pretty much that size. Whoops, I've got to try that again and do it properly. Okay, I'm getting a weird little um, interface bug there, but anyway, close enough. And um, I've drawn a box there, it's pretty close to that. And if I look down in my dimensions there, it's telling me it's 2.96 meters, which is pretty darn close to three meters. So that means I've basically modified that to be uh, pretty spot on to the scale I'm working with. So that means I could now, and essentially the, the more detailed your drawing is that you bring in, the more accurate you can get that. Okay, I've got not a particularly high res image here, so that's why it's a little bit out. And also when I drew that box there to just check that it wasn't exactly accurate, but you can see it's pretty close. So that's how you do modify a drawing uh, that you've scanned in uh, to the correct scale. And then uh, just as a, an additional little um, hint, I suppose, on this, um, if you wanted to start working with uh, an object like this where you've just got a basic structure you're trying to make, just a quick tip that uh, might help to uh, start uh, creating walls and things. Uh, one method you can use, of course you could just get the pencil tool and just start drawing around the walls. But there's probably a faster way to get a quick wall structure going. Uh, if you just get the rectangle tool and you draw on the outside. So I'm just not going to worry about the slab for the moment, I'm just going to draw the, the actual walls. Uh, and I've drawn on the perimeter of the um, plan there. Now that's fantastic of course, but um, a little bit difficult to see because it's now obscuring the plan underneath. So so that you can keep drawing and also see the plan drawing underneath, you just change your view. Up in the view menu you go to face style and choose x-ray and that will uh, temporarily uh, show you a see-through view. Now that's not going to be all that easy to work with later on when you're into the more detailed part of the modeling but when you're doing the initial setup this is actually a very good way to work. Anyway what I'm going to do next is then uh, draw a second rectangle to represent the inside walls. So once again if you were being really accurate and you had a quite accurate plan um, yes, it would make sense to go in and measure those wall cavity distances and things, um, but let's assume that the plan drawing here is pretty close and all I want is a basic model to start uh, building some uh, room designs around. So this is going to work pretty close. I'm trusting that the drawing in this case is going to be close enough. So there's my two rectangles and of course what that allows me to do, if you now go back to the selection tool and you start clicking, you'll find that um, the cavity section now is essentially recognizable as um, a structure that you could use the push pull or the extrude tool to um, pull the walls up. Okay, so that's the reasoning in that, but I'm just going to carry on for a little bit and add the internal walls as well. And once again, the method that I would use here is you could use the pencil, of course, to um, draw around those walls, but I think it's really just as fast to go through and uh, add. A small rectangle. I am being careful here to go right across the drawing to make sure that that is uh, intersecting with intersecting with the um, other edges. That's what those little red dots are representing. Okay, and again, uh, I'm just going off the plan exactly here. I'm not really measuring this. If I was being super accurate, I would be paying attention to the dimensions down here. But I'm just doing some quick demo. I'm sure you get the idea. And I'll just do all these. Like so. As I said, the critical thing here is I'm making sure that these are aligning with the edges of each of the intersecting walls because that does become very important because what I want to happen here is I want all these walls to effectively join up and all extrude out in one go. Which I could do, um, but there's one final step uh, which I need to look at and that is if I go back to my selection tool and click on some of these edges and uh, the interior of these spaces. Um, it's, it is working, but you can see it's still treating the interior walls now as separate to the exterior cavity. And I want them all to basically extrude up in one go. So what I've got to do is just got to zoom up and anywhere where there's one little joining edges, I'm just going to go in and grab the eraser tool and delete that little joining edge. And that's effectively going to join that all up as one thing. So I'm just going to go around the drawing quite quickly and do that. Make 
So, ooh. I'm just being careful to make sure I'm getting all of them. And that will basically allow me to get rid of any of those joins. And I think that's right. I don't think I've missed any there. And now when I click on basically any of those wall cavities, it's seeing that as one connected piece of geometry. And I'll just use the orbit tool to move the view a little bit so that I can get my push pull tool or the extrude tool and pull up a bunch of walls. I'm just getting a little interface glitch there, but I'm just pulling up like that. And again, if I was, um, actually that's just giving me a little error down there in that distance thing. I'm just going to do that again. All right, mine a little bug there, but I think it was potentially caused by a little join that was missed just there. So I'll try that again and I'll just turn uh, X-ray back on for a minute so you can see what's going on. Grab the walls, so I'm just clicking in the cavity section there and start to pull up and that's basically working and then if we know we wanted, you know, I don't know, a ceiling height of, oh, we'll just go with the standard I suppose which is around 2400 to 2700 millimetres that is, there we go, and that's perfectly extruded up to the right height. And there we go. So if I turn off the X-ray, we can see now we've got a room and wall structure uh, ready to go and completely accurately based off the, the plan there. Uh, now I know what a few of the sharp-eyed amongst you will be saying. You'll be saying, yep, that's great, but what about the door cavities? Um, yes, of course. There are cavities there. There's probably a few windows that would be very handy on something like this as well. Um, what I would normally do is I would attempt to uh, create the cavities for those things after the walls go in. Um, that's relatively easy to do if I just sort of very quick one here. Again, I won't be terribly accurate with um, how I'm drawing this, but if I just put in a door, drawing it on the front face of one of those um, walls there to represent. Uh, that door. Now I've, I've changed my angle around so I can basically see the plan sort of gap there for where the door cavity is but I can also see that I'm definitely drawing on this wall and again if I was being you know really careful about my measurements I could come down here and uh, I think a standard door is around about 820 millimeters wide I think we'd probably go with oh I don't know what are we at two meters I think it's 2040 or something let's try that millimeters high there we go so that's a perfectly accurate standard door and then what I can do is I can just punch a hole through that wall using the uh, push-pull method uh, sometimes that's a bit easier to see that working if you don't have x-ray turned on so I'll just turn that off push through and just remember with this push-pull tool when you're working with views like this you will occasionally get that slight problem of um, not always being certain it's going to push through and delete. Um, kind of what you're looking for is that change in rendering pattern. You can see just there it's actually changing to a slightly different shading pattern. And when it does that, you can tell that that's the point at which it's actually going to give the knockout. Okay, you may find you get the problem from time to time where it. Well, this one probably won't do it with this view, but um, I'm sure you've had it before when you've used this tool where you're trying to knock a hole, and actually what it does is it drags a well, it drags a box back through the other side like that. Um, unfortunately, there's no real easy workaround for that. You've just got to pedantically sit there and possibly just keep changing your view angle until you get just the right angle so it doesn't get confused with any details in the background. Okay. Anyway, so that's how you can pretty easily knock a hole in a wall to make windows and doors and things. Um, remember to go through and just clean up edges like this. Okay, it's just going to make the modelling a whole lot neater and much easier to work with other things as you place them in the room later. Um, so really, yeah, that's basically it. And uh, the more you fiddle around with a model like that, the more you could end up achieving something quite detailed like this, um, which when you have a look at that, you'll see it is actually nothing much more than what I've just done. The walls are exactly the same. I've gone to more detail there with uh, cavities for windows and things but they're all achieved exactly the same way I just showed you. 
Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, obviously, the more detailed model took a lot longer than what I've just shown there. Uh, I've added quite a lot of details and sections and things like that. Uh, but as I said, as a starting point, um, most of the bulk of that was just created on that exact same plan using that exact same method. It takes a matter of minutes to just get a wall structure and yeah, then off you go with uh, all the specific details. Okay, hopefully that was helpful and um, yes, enjoy your SketchUp modeling. Bye now.